Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm messing around with some fiber optic cables that um, yeah I'm cleaning and um, I have shown this trick before but I want to show you where well this is a very expensive microscope that can see the end of a fiber optic cable and see if it's dirty or not and it can check it for you and tells you if the fiber optic cable is good or if it's bad um, very expensive but this is a laser thinky um, it sends out a laser light right now I have it protected it's easier to see that this is lighting up than that this is. well actually that's you can see that but it sends a laser light out into the fiber optic cable and it's very easy to use this and also see if the fiber is dirty or not so I want to show you that trick because it's very handy and um, you might not always need the, the expensive device to check your cables so um, to the table here I have a bag of um, old fiber optic cables that are scored from work because we don't reuse those so let's just pick one there and you can see when they're thrown out they're not protected because <laughs> it's garbage right so um, we need to clean those and we need to put on some 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 end caps to protect them from being dirty and I might as well go get those end caps right away because as soon as one is on a cable like that there is four connects or four endpoints and if um, if it's left unprotected there's a very very big chance that it's gonna be dirty in a second or two so being one of those people that are very very bad at throwing stuff away I have another bag here with good stuff including in the bottom a lot of these end caps for these cables because we have been installing quite a few of these so let's just have some of those ready so first let's use the microscope this is um I, I have done a video on this this is a cheaper one this one only does lc uh, well actually it does multiple cables but it doesn't do mpo cables so it has a protective thingy here and that turn it on here there it comes on and then we can pop the cable in here and we can see that yeah this is what the cable look like this is a bloody mess this one tests it so if we can press the button here it checks it and this should get a big fat fail and it does big fat fail right there so this is not good um, we can just check the other connection now that we have it it's oh it's not as sturdy but <laughs> it definitely doesn't look good yeah it fails too um you can actually wipe this in your in your closing we could try and rub it in my let's just let's just try and rub it in my sleeve here this is not how you do it but it could actually now that it's this dirty it could actually get more clean see more clean but it's not perfect see there is still stuff there it's not not nowhere near perfect but better definitely better but it's not a bulletproof way you could get a, the smallest little hair from your sweater to block the lights and that wouldn't be great this is a nice device for exactly that let's try the laser thingy where did I put it there so laser thingy um, let's just make sure was this the one we were just looking at uh, this is not that dirty but it has some really big nasty stuff up there you can see that up the top some nasties let's check the other one same thing nasties so um i have a converter here this is for my laser thingy if you are buying a laser pin for checking fiber optic cables this is a good thing to have 
Um, I wish I had a double one, but I only have a single one, but I'm not even sure that a double one is, is but it fits on the cable and when I take the laser thing, the protective cap, it also fits on the laser. So now I can send the laser beam out and we can see on the table that it goes through the cable. We can also see where it comes out. I'll uh, turn the lights off again here. Can you see that? That's not difficult to see. And, and there is a magic trick. This is a fiber optic cleaner and um, it, it cleans the fiber optic cable. You, um, we should have a look at that. It looks like this. They are available, they cost about uh, $15, maybe a little bit less. But what it does is that it has the smallest of the smallest little thing here, there. And there is a tiny little string that moves around a pin. And when you clean, it wipes the tip of the fiber optic cable with that little string. It's, it's kind of like the thing you use to clean your teeth. I do believe this is even thinner and it's in a roll in here. There's a tiny little window where you can see it in there so that you can see when it's empty and out of string. It doesn't reuse the string, it just moves it out of the way and it's mm, some spring loaded stuff. But let's turn the lights off again. This plastic thing makes so that, oh, the laser light makes this look party, party, party. Okay, um, it will fit over the lights. So um, we can see the light and when I clean it, uh, if I can hit it, the light goes away. Did you see that? The light is still there, but now the end of the fiber optic cable is clean. That means that the, the light will just pass through it without making the tip of it red. So um, if I take my uh, filthy finger here and just tap it, it became a little bit more red. If I do it again and again and again and again and again, it's blotchy red again. That means that the fiber optic cable is dirty like, dirty like something. But if I clean it again, It became less, so I didn't get all of it. There, it's gone. So now the fiber optic cable is pretty clean. And for use in a data sensor, this is not bad. There is totally gone. And we can just check with the camera. It uh, turned itself off in the meanwhile. This camera cost 25,000 Danish kroners. Oh, and of course now the laser is shining right in, the laser light is shining right into the camera, so it doesn't see as much. <laughs> well, it's actually pretty dirty still. Yeah, it failed. So even though it's way cleaner than before, it's, um, it's still too dirty for the microscope. That is, that's not bad. I think it will pass. I was wrong. Okay, this is what it can look like if you have uh, tried to clean it with your sweater. There is the tiniest of hairs just laying across there and you don't have to move this much. Well, now it's not actually touching uh, the, the microscope the microscope is not actually touching the fiber, it's, it's showing it uh, from a distance. But if anything touches this, even a little bit of wind, that thing can be right in the middle of there. It's only in the middle there that there is any light. All the rest of it is not carrying light. That's just to make the fiber optic cable thicker. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is an example of a cable that is beyond repair. I have the tiniest little dot up there. Uh, not the big one up there, but that one that is closer. And if we check and let it scan, it will find that dot and it will say that it's bad. There, that red dot. And I tried everything and it just keeps failing. So this cable is crap. Okay, so I have a couple of cables now that have tested okay. 
um, if you do the finger test with the laser thing, uh, be prepared that it's really hard to clean afterwards. So uh, just so that you know that. So um, only do that with a cable that you don't really care about because yeah, cleaning it sucks. <laughs> I have told the story before, now that I'm cleaning these, uh, we had a lot of trouble at work. We had multiple errors on our fiber optic network and we've been uh, changing SFPs and chaining FSPs and these were dying on from one end to another end and dampening in lights and stuff and we couldn't figure it out. All the cables we used were brand new and right out of the bag. I don't remember, no, it's not this brand, but it was a local distributor here in Denmark and well, we couldn't figure it out. We didn't have anything to check the cables and at some point we got a microscope, we got one of these and we checked the cables and they were dirty. They were so dirty. We checked 100 cables brand new right out of the bag and you would expect that a brand new cable that was clean and looked good would be clean they were not we had a 96% um, failure rate when we checked with the microscope 100 cables 96 of them failed and it wasn't just one connection you know there's four connections on here so some of them had multiple dirty fiber ends but as, as soon as it had one dirty fiber end, the cable was kind of faulty. You can't be sure that it's clean right out of the back. There is of course a better chance of it being clean right out of the back. I have forgotten to write on this how long this is. One, two, three, four. Hmm. I'm putting the cables in small bags uh, as I go. Put on the, the tabs and in small bags so that they don't get dirty again. But a cable like this, as soon as you take the, the ends of it, you have to be very careful all the time, not touching it and not having it touch anything because it gets dirty so easily. So as I said, I fished these cables out of the trash and this is what they look like generally after not being protected and laying in the back. Uh, before you uh, start using these, you have to do something to them, even just trying to clean them in a sweater or getting that uh, 10 15 dollar laser pin and, and doing that the red nose reindeer test on the fiber optic cable um, is better than nothing i don't expect anyone to go out and get a microscope like this i wouldn't even get it for myself because i am too cheap to to spend 25000 danish kroners how much is that 4000 dollars uh, on a microscope like this. That is definitely too much for home use. But if you're in a business environment, it might not be a bad idea. I'm not promoting this brand at all. I'm just saying microscope is a good thing to have. Where that there is different kinds of these fiber optic cables, uh, like there's patch cables, there are different qualities. Oh, I thought, where did the text disappear to? This is an OM4 cable. It's, it's right there between my dirty nails. And uh, this is the second highest quality at the moment. There is OM5, which is the, the highest quality at the moment. As far as I know, it's a good idea to know that that exists. But if you're running one or 10 gigabit, well, you don't have to go this high. You can go with an OM3 cable, which is a tiny bit cheaper. This might be a tiny bit more expensive. And then OM5 is a tiny bit more expensive again. It's only really important if you wanna go and transfer data at a 100 gigabits or something like that, then the cable quality gets important. Here is another cable that keeps failing. See those white dots at the bottom there? They're not going away. I tried a lot. Uh, right now I've just done it in the sweater to see if they really don't wanna go away. So it's the rest of it is also kind of dirty, but those white dots doesn't go away. So this cable is junk. So this is kind of tedious work and uh, it can take multiple goes to, to make sure that the cable is clean. I don't use the pin, uh, the, the cleaning pin all the time because, well, these are expensive. I have a piece of uh, tiny cloth, oh, some paper. It, it's specially made paper for cleaning 
fiber optic cables. They came with a set that I got. Well, actually, um, I, have the, uh, I have the set here. I actually used my private little fiber optic kit here when I have fiber optic problems at work. And it just happened to come with a cleaning cloths. So I'm using that to clean the cable and just wiping it. And then sometimes I have to do it multiple times for it to become clean. Keeping fiber optic cables clean is very difficult. As soon as you take those little taps off, they become dirty in no time. Most of the time when you get a perfectly new cable, it will be spotless. That's how it is with most of the new cables. They are good to go when you take them out of the bag. From experience, we check every cable. We don't actually run the test. We just look at the cable on the screen and see if it's dirty. But if it looks clean, we don't have to run the test. It takes four seconds per cable or something. And when you're connecting hundreds of cables, well, it gets tedious waiting for that every single time. And remember, every cable has four ends. So that does become stupid at some point uh, where you can very quickly just put it up and see that's good and the next one see that's good and uh, yeah I do that. The laser pointer method is really good if you want to find an error on a cable uh, which is a blotchy mess every time you have to patch up a server. So uh, if a server, our so a VMware server has six fiber optic connections. It has uh, two connections for a fiber channel um, that is network storage and then it has four connections for um, for network but VMware likes different connections so so there is six fiber optic cables going out of that server up to a patch rack and then it goes over to the patch panel where we have to patch it with six cables four over to the network switches and two over to the fiber channel switches which they also have brocade the network switches are Cisco and um, ACI switches blotchy expensive not that they're giving the brocade switches away but it's all blotchy expensive <laughs> and off rant um, I hope you got something out of this video if you are messing around with fiber optic cables what do you do to keep them clean please leave in the comments below maybe you can give me some good pointers uh, maybe even if you have a better way of cleaning them then wait 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 <laughs> well you never know <laughs> so uh, yeah thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye